Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Today, we're gonna have a look at the new Ubuntu 19.10 beta, which when I'm recording this video was just dropped yesterday. There's probably some updates in the daily build already if you're watching this really close to the date. And uh, what we wanna get in and talk about here is there is some really good and amazing things Ubuntu is bringing to the table. And there are some concerns that I had as well. And so we're gonna go ahead and uh, dive on into this. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and start out looking at their websites. So this is pronounced Eon Ermine. All right, so this is Ubuntu 1910 Eon Ermine. So of course, somebody over on Reddit, how do you even pronounce this? Uh, answer, I can't install Debian. No, no, no. Um, that's Eon, it's uh, just the British uh, spelling different from us over here in the, uh, uh, in the United States. But you can come over here and grab a desktop image, grab a server install image. Uh, there are also the various, uh, are all the things in here or not? Um, I don't think all of the flavors are here, but you can actually grab, I did not grab the link where you can grab all the different flavors to it as well, but you can get all the different Ubuntu flavors are also ready to test as their betas as well. Um, OMG Ubuntu does have some information about it. Uh, as well as the, the updated links. And the reason I wanted to pull this out is one of the bad parts is this is one of the concerns I had with Ubuntu that they're so rigid on their development and release schedule that they're not actually meeting their goals. So in this, they have all these things that, that they're planned for. Is this the right article or is it the other one? Okay, here we go. Linux kernel 5.3, yes, this is here. GNOME 3.34, yes, this is here, but their system is not properly reporting it yet. Experimental ZFS file system install option, not present in the beta. Might be in the daily build by now, but it's not present in the beta. Ships NVIDIA drivers on the ISO, I do not know since I consciously run Linux, I do not need to use NVIDIA, so I use AMD. So I'm not completely sure. Flickr free boot for Intel users, I cannot confirm. Ubuntu doc trash does not appear to be in here and external drive icons apparently does not seem to be in here either. Uh, there is a revamp theme. Someone said this is a light theme, which is apparently not in here. And there's theme support for apps. And there is the firewall as now available as a snap. So with this, when the final release is done, if this is all pulled off, it's going to bring a lot of fascinating things to the table. But as of the beta, which is, this is a div, this is a distro that's set to release in only about two or three weeks. We've got three weeks or so. The experimental file system, which they hyped up. Now, this is a big deal because ZFS, no Linux distro, has the option to install ZFS on the install. You can install it on several distros, but this would be the first distro that, that does. According to the developers, they said that they have it they, it was in there, it just was not reviewed yet, which is why it was not pushed out to the installation. So the installer is nothing new. Uh, the installer, it just has all of your, your basic stuff in there, and there's nothing, um, you know, nothing different from the installer from you've seen it from the past. Apparently, as soon as that has been reviewed, then it will be pushed out. So it's going to be pushed out somewhere in the daily build cycle, I hope. And that's kind of a danger of not including something like that in the beta. And again, the Ubuntu trash dog, these are all final, you know, very minor things in there, but that's kind of what, uh, what we are anticipating. They're also saying that it should run a lot faster. It is based on GNOME 3.34, so I have no, um, no reason to believe it will not run any faster or not. And uh, I was encountering some problems with the beta, at least on a virtual machine, where it would either be really slow to boot or would never shut down. It gets caught in some loop and I had to force the machine down. So we'll kind of see if uh, hopefully we don't get any of those issues here. Let's go ahead and uh, dive on in and see what we get. All right, so in my video here, we are trying to boot the machine after it's been installed and it simply will not boot. So we're just going to go ahead and load it off of the ISO and we're going to reinstall the machine and hopefully reinstalling the machine will actually get something that works. So this one here should go right on into our traditional Ubuntu load screen where I should be able to do this. And I'll say that when I was first testing this last night, 
I got this, I actually tested it, I wanted to poke around at a lot of things, I installed it, everything was good, I just wanted to show you guys the the very beginning of the thing, and so I was like, okay, we're gonna go ahead and install it, and then just not reboot the system. Um, and so doing that, apparently, I'm now stuck in a boot loop where I cannot install, I cannot boot into the system. So we're gonna have to go ahead and reinstall the system. We're going to just erase the whole disk and install it. And we're gonna continue. And so there's nothing in here that is surprising if you've installed Ubuntu before. There is nothing different about this. Now what they will have in here eventually is the option to install ZFS. That is not in here as of this beta release, although it may be in the daily, the daily builds by now. Let's go ahead and give this machine a name. We'll call it Ubuntu with a super secret password that is definitely not 123. <clears throat> does tell me that it's a little bit short, but that's okay. All right, so we're gonna come back. Uh, this will probably only take about five minutes or so to install, so we're gonna go over, look at the comments, and we will come on back here after it's done installing. All right, so our installation's done. We wanna restart, so this hopefully will not take long. This is the screen here that I should be able to actually get in here and see what's going on, and it should actually, um, it should actually shut down, which it looks like it is. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 we got boot, we got boot! It took forever, but we finally got boot. All right, go ahead and log in with our super secret password. That's definitely not one, two, three. All right, so on first install, we're gonna get some pop-up screens. It's gonna walk us through some basic settings here. So here you can collect, uh, connect your online accounts. We have Ubuntu single sign-on. That's what they're pushing now. We have Google, Nextcloud, and Microsoft. I am so glad that they got rid of Facebook from that list too. <laughs> Yay. All right. So over here, you can send them information. This is the controversial screen. Of course, it's still here. Even if you say, no, don't send system info, they still ping the servers. In my experience or in my belief, if you say, no, don't send system information, it should not send anything back to Canonical. But... It actually does. Why is this a big deal? Because it can be used to fingerprint a system. And that is actually a no-go for some industries. All right, over here, privacy location services defaults to off. If you want to turn them on, you can just toggle this little button here. I'm going to keep my location services turned off. And then over here, if we want, we can open software now to install different software. We'll go ahead and click on done. So here we are on the desktop, and uh, the theming is nice. I, I do like the theming, and uh, you can see that even in a virtual machine, this guy is actually pretty quick. Uh, they do want to install something. We have Ubuntu base. We have a list of things, so I like that they are giving us the list of everything they want to install. We're going to go ahead and install this now because I'm pretty sure that there's nothing here that's going to cause any issues with looking at this distro. Here we have our right-click context menu. We can change our backgrounds, display settings, settings. This one should give us the new GNOME background settings. So if you want to go ahead and change your backgrounds, you can just click on the images here, and then you can set your background or your lock screen. That is an amazing picture. Look at that. Beautiful. I love it. Very nice. Uh, we got some. We got some other... Uh, images here as well. So you can also now add a picture right up here. So this is a little bit different from the old way of adding pictures into this. Uh, this is something that's a new feature of 3.34, GNOME 3.34. Of course, we have everything else over here. Uh, here's our, our dock size. If you don't like your dock that large, you can go ahead and change it over there. Everything else in here should be pretty much the same as GNOME. So let's go ahead and have a look at our details. You'll see that it says it's GNOME 3.33.91. That seems to be an issue that it's not updating the, it's not reporting back the right version of GNOME. But if we actually were to boot up a terminal and look at our GNOME version, then you'll see we are running 3.34 which is good, um, and it's actually, it's very snappy when you're uh, loading things up. It's, you know, and it's, understand, it's also doing some, uh, it's doing some uh, behind the scenes stuff right now for us as well. Let's go ahead and look at our system monitor as well. 
So here's our system resources. So we're running about 1.8 gig. Just remember that we just booted up Firefox and it should be installing backgrounds, uh, installing updates in the background as well. So let's go ahead and close that down. Let's close this down. I'm not sure if the updates, yeah, the updates are still running. Hmm. I thought I clicked install now, maybe I, I didn't. All right. So now uh, it's 1.3 gig while installing updates. So that's actually good and it is nice and flashy. So I, I do like this. This is the minimal install. So with your minimal install here, we do not have any extra software, just all your, your basic, um, your driver utilities, your va various system utilities and a web browser and that's all we get. So then you can actually go into your store and you can track down anything else that you might want to install. All right. <clears throat> so here is our software installer, which is just GNOME. So uh, the GNOME software store, I believe, and uh, you can actually grab anything. Now, uh, one of the things that I mentioned earlier on here is uh, we do have GNOME 3.34, although it is not updating properly. That's okay. I can't confirm if the NVIDIA drivers on here now. Why did it change my background? Hmm. I didn't want that background. It's a cool background. I like it, but I wanted this one. Not sure why it changed my background on me. There we are. Anyway, um, we do have, they said there's new theming available, but um, not exactly uh, seeing that unless I missed it somewhere and there's an extra theming somewhere. Uh, but anyway, those are kind of minor things. ZFS is scheduled to be released in this version, but it is not on the beta as of yet. Now there's the Ubuntu dock uh, trash can, which I think would be a, a cool thing. I would like to have my trash can on the dock. That's was one of those things pushed up. Now, the thing that I want to look at is saying there's some issues here and it's something I've warned about and then people are like, oh no, you're just a passing on FUD. I'm going to show you something. All right, so first we're going to have a quick look at our snap list. So this is everything that is involved that is installed with snap. We have core snap, we have core 18, we have, uh, we have gnome, gnome calculator, gnome characters, gnome logs, uh, GTK common themes. Okay, now the problem is, is they're starting to install software through this, through apt, which installs snap. So if we do a sudo apt install Chromium browser, enter my super secret password, installing the Chromium snap. So, this is what I was talking about. I get and I understand if you want to have snap capabilities on your system, but when I want to install something and I'm using apt, why are we installing the snap version? And by the way, this is such an easy line of code. It is very possible that what we are going to start to see is this erosion of the software repos available to Ubuntu. And we're going to start seeing that even if you are used to and installing things via the apt command line, that it's going to install snap packages anyway. So we're going to go ahead and wait for this to finish installing. It takes about three or four minutes. And then we'll go ahead and um, we'll go ahead and uh, have a look at, uh, it looks like it's going for a little faster. All right. So now if I go up and look at our snap list again, look at that, we have Chromium install this snap. Now, of course, going back to the Snapcraft page when there was some malicious uh, stuff put in their system about a couple years ago, they came out and said, hey, we're shifting to this model. Instead of trusting the code, we want to trust the developers. Well, who makes Chromium? Oh, Google? Hmm. Yeah. So now if you are running your, running your sudo apt, you are getting snap packages installed. Now that is, this is the only app I know of that's going to do that. This is one that I actually reported on this a while back. And I said, this is kind of a problem because now you think you're installing through the basic package repository, but what they end up doing for the Chromium web browser is all their apt applications doing is installing the software from the repositories. It's just going and running the snap installer, but it's so easy to do. We'll start to probably start to see a lot more applications being installed in this way. It's like, ah, I don't want to mess with that. Let's just go ahead and install the snap. The snaps are available. Let's just go ahead and install the snap. And so that's one of those challenges that I have. 
uh, with this system. And I consider that to be a little on the bad side. So of course, with everything that is based on Ubuntu, how are they all going to respond? And you'll even notice here, I mean, it did just, come on, it did show up at the top of the list. Why is it not showing up at the top of the list now? No applications found. You guys did see that show up at the top of the list, okay. So here is this, and looking down here, you'll see that the source comes from the Snap Store. Let's go ahead and look at something else. Um, let's look at Thunderbird. So you can see even Thunderbird uh, there is installed with the Snap Store. Let's, let's, go, let's go ahead and see what happens if we uh, install it here. sudo apt install Thunderbird. I don't know if this is going to install from the Snap or if this is going to install from the repositories. So it appears as though it's going to be installing from the repositories. So if I were to go into the store and install it, it seems as though it's only going to be installing. Okay, so Thunderbird is not there. You'll see here that if I go to install Thunderbird, that it's going to install in the store, it's going to install it only through the snap package. If I do it through the command line, it's going to install it through the repository. And so now we're starting to get this Microsoft-ish thing of having multiple versions of things running around. So if I wanted to install this and I want to use it specifically from the repos, I will have to now install things through apt not through our basic software store. So this is a type of thing that we are starting to see in Ubuntu is we are eroding down the more traditional ways of running applications in favor of snaps. Now, the biggest concern with snaps is they are a centralized system with only one distribution method, and that is the ultimate issue of the problem. So like, I'm not as concerned with flat packs or as concerned with app images because there are other ways and means of installing them. Um, the other thing I just wanted to show right here is we are running Linux kernel 5.3.0. So just wanted to show you guys that. It was on my list, didn't want to forget it. Didn't think of a better way to put that in. So there is my thoughts on the Ubuntu 1910. While they are bringing a lot of excellent things to the table, such as ZFS, although it's not in the beta yet, it should be here. Uh, they're getting the GNOME 3.34, very fast stability, otherwise a, a decently run system, but I'm concerned about, I'm concerned about this snap issue once again, because if I'm installing something through the terminal, I would expect, if I'm installing through through apt, I would expect to install something from the repositories, not to install something through the Snap Store. If I want to install Chromium through the Snap Store, I always have the ability to go and use my Snap install Chromium and install Chromium through the Snap Store. So I'm sure I could do the same thing with Thunderbird where I can install it through the Snap Store if I want to, but if I go into the Ubuntu software store, the easy GUI way to install things, Thunderbird is there, but it's only available as a Snap. What if I don't want the Snap? And that is where we're starting to get some issues. Now, if this were a little one-off in the corner distro, it wouldn't make a difference. But this is the distro that a lot of Linux distributions are created from. And so if they start to erode their software repositories, they will start to do more damage to the people who do not want to use a centralized software system that is relying on the developer, not the code, to audit. So those are some of my, my thoughts, my concerns. Overall, if you need to test out Ubuntu, absolutely. I am not telling anybody to stop using Ubuntu. I'm not telling people that Ubuntu is bad. I'm throwing out legitimate concerns into the community so that hopefully we can look at this and correct course a little bit and say maybe we need to have a little bit more clarity. Maybe we need to have a separate place for snaps versus apps. And ultimately, this, it, this brings credibility to what I talked about with the Ubuntu and the apt and snapped controversy that I caused back in February, all right? And this is, this is the, the end game of that. I'm installing a web browser through apt and it installs a snap and that is a problem. So those are my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts. Do you care about that? Do you not care about that? Let me know in the comments down below.